My name is Siobhan Small. I, I, I am a supervisor and attorney at the Legal Aid Society. I, as Selena mentioned, I supervise um, the Low Income Taxpayer Clinic and um, also with the Community Development Project, which helps folks to um, small businesses, incorporate, et cetera. Um, we also help work with the Consumer Law Project, which helps um, folks who are experiencing debt collection, student loan issues, bankruptcy, whatever the, the case may be. Um, you could reach out to us. Um, there's, here's our contact information, and I will give it out um, at the end as well. If you or your clients are, have any issues regarding um, taxes, if you have any questions regarding the stimulus, feel free to give us a call. Our number is 212-426-3013. That's 212-426-3013. We're located um, at 125th Street and 7th Avenue in Harlem. Um, but we do serve the entire um, of New York City and um, or, or occasionally we do work um, with folks outside of the city as well. Um, we do not turn away anybody. If anyone has a question, we're willing to, to um, answer them. Okay. Um, generally, we work with, um, we assist folks who are um, experiencing audits, um, who have collection issues with the IRS and New York State Department of Taxation and Finance. Um, and we, you know, that's mostly what we do. Um, however, with the stimulus um, package coming down to, to help um, uh, low income folks, and, and actually not even just low income, lo low to moderate income individuals, We've been getting a lot of questions around that, so um, I'm happy to, to explain a little bit of, um, uh, around the stimulus package to all of you. Um, so, what is the stimulus package? So, basically, it's called so it's called the economic impact payments. Um, you may hear a bunch of different terms. You'll hear economic impact. You'll hear recovery rebates. You'll hear stimulus. You'll hear CARES Act money. So, there are a lot of different ways you will you will encounter this this issue. Um, it's a two trillion dollar stimulus law passed by the federal government back in March. And basically, it's in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, in general, um, if you, you qualify for um, this, this payment if you make less than $99,000 um, for a single person, a married couple less than one, not 198, mm -hmm. and if you're a head of household, which means that you file by yourself, you're not um, filing with another spouse, and you have a dependent on your tax return, you will also qualify for, for this money as well. Um, so one of the, the really good things about the economic impact payments, um, and it's not the, the best project, the best program out there, but it's something that the government did and it's money available to us and our, our clients, so we should take advantage of it. But one of the best things about it is that it's, it's somewhat automatic for a lot of individuals, okay? Um, however, there are a few people who we will encounter who do not qualify no matter what. So if you are, um, uh, have an individual taxpayer identification number, um, you will not qualify for the economic stimulus payment. So it's only meant for folks who are, um, have social security numbers um, or social security numbers that are valid for employment. Um, and you, and that's how you, that's the basic bottom line of how you qualify for this payment. So if you, uh, and, and it's supposed to be automatic, as I said, so you're elig ineligible if you do not have a social security number. And also you are el ineligible if you file the tax return in 2019 or 2018 with someone who does not have a social security number. So, you know, in, in mixed status households, which means someone is a US citizen and someone is, who is undocumented, if that, that couple filed a joint tax return in 2019 or 2018, that tax, that couple was not gonna get any of that money. The, the person who has the social security number is not gonna get it. And the person who has the I-10 is not gonna get it. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's a penalty that this administration has really put on um, a, a lot of um, individuals that it's like, you can't even file it, you can't even get this money for yourself simply by having a, a spouse who is undocumented. It's actually, and, and if you, and even the, the children on those returns will not get this, this money either. So it's actually really, really sad that it's, it's really excluding not only the people that this Trump administration has targeted all along who are undocumented, but it's also impacting the folks who are um, U.S. citizens or, or who have um, work authorization and they are also targeted by, by this exclusion, okay? Um, but as I said, you know, there are a number of ways some, some folks are able to get this money um, automatically. And um, generally it, it will flow through this way. So if you file the 2019 tax return and you did not file with a spouse who is, um, has an ITIN, you will get that, the, the IRS system is gonna look at the 2019 returns and if you file the return, you will get that benefit. If you did not file 2019, but you already you did file 2018, 
you will get that benefit as well because it's going to look at 2019. If you didn't look at if you didn't file 2019, don't worry about it. It's going to look at 2018. And if you filed, it's going to send that you go, you will get that money automatically. Then there are folks who are on Social Security. So if you receive Social Security um, um, benefits, whether it's retirement, disability, um, survivors benefits, you will get that money automatically. Um, and th that was so. Those are the first categories of people A, B, and C um, who were able to get this money. And, and legal aid really stepped in, and we we're like, you know, there are a bunch of other people out there who should get this money automatically as well. So we did a lot of um, campaigning, a lot of um, work with our elected officials, and then they announced that they would be um, um, giving this money to also to folks who are receiving SSI as well. So a, a lot of individuals who may not be able to work, who may be disabled. Um, who, who may not have enough um, social security quarters to qualify for disability, et cetera, um, they will get SSI benefits and those folks will get that money automatically too, okay? Um, there's also the real ret retirement system, which is similar to social security, they'll get that automatically and VA um, um, benefits. If you receive a pension from the VA system, um, you will get that money automatically as well. So again, it goes to, if you file the 2019 return, automatic then 2018 return, automatic social security, SSI, um, VA, you will get that money automatically, okay? Now, of course there, um, so again, if, so this note here, if you have not filed your 2019 tax return, you can still do so now. The deadline is July 15th, but it is possible to file even after that deadline. So a lot of folks are, are realizing, yeah, I did not file 2018, did not file 2019, um, I'm not able to get this money automatically because I don't have SSI, SSA, whatever it is. But um, that's, that, don't worry too much about that because you could still file a return now. Um, the only drawback, unfortunately, is that there are not of not um, very many tax reputable tax preparers who are able to do tax returns virtually. So um, taxpayers, unfortunately, would have to either um, file the returns themselves or find someone who is able to do that um, virtually. There's also another system called the, um, um, you could go to coronavirus slash non-filers. And so there's an, a non-filer enter payment here information system. So if you did not receive the money automatically and you and you do not normally file a tax return. So that's a, a lot of individuals who, the income may be too low. Maybe they're working a little bit. Maybe they're not required to file a tax return. Maybe they, there's another reason why they were not gonna get the money automatically. Um, um, but they, there's a system called the non-filer enter payment here system. And you could just basically create an account with the IRS, verify your email address or your telephone or your phone number, and basically just put in your demographics, your name, your address, your social security number. And if you, and it doesn't matter if you, if you haven't filed a tax return, you just, if, if you put in your direct deposit information and you will get that money again, automatically. Okay. And so those, those are the people who, um, whose income is low enough that they have no filing requirement, but again, it, they, they would still be able to file this, this go through this IRS system in order to um, claim this um, stimulus um, payment. Um, so that's, so one of the other things people have a lot of questions about is that they're wondering whether it, you know, the stimulus payment could be taken, can be taken for anything else. So the, 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 the stimulus payment is basically protected from back taxes. You know, I know a lot of clients who say, I'm not going to file a tax return because they're going to take my money anyway. But this payment actually, no matter what, it actually is safe, whether you owe the federal government taxes, whether you owe state taxes, um, whoever you owe, it's actually protected. Um, and keep in mind that if you owe, um, a lot of folks have um, bad credit. It could be that you owe a credit card bill. You're also protected. That money cannot be touched by anyone directly. Um, so one, one thing we that we, the only person, the only uh, um, entity that can take this money directly is actually for child support. So child support is the only, only, only exception that could take this money directly from the, the federal government before it even gets to you as, as, a, as, a, as a beneficiary. Um, but if it, and if it does go into your bank accounts, um, a, a lot of banks who are, were actually taking this money for overdraft fees, for, um, and they were allowing debt collectors to seize it um, if there was a judgment um, that, that was given in court. But the attorney general has said no. Um, it, it's, she's made it clear that this payment is actually meant as a, as a public benefit 
to benefit low income folks, to benefit middle income people. So you cannot take this benefit. This is an, it's supposed to be for an emergency and apply it to bank fees, apply it to um, judgments, et cetera. So this money should be pretty safe from everyone except child support, okay? Oh, can I say something about that? Once again, my name is Bernard Ward. Hey, right. Bernard, Bernard, we're going, to, we're going to do questions at the end because we want him to get oh. through it, okay? Oh, boy. I might forget about it, but... No, write, it text, write it down, Bernard. Write it, <laughs> text write me it a down. question, all right? If anything, text me a question and we'll make sure you get an answer. Yeah, okay. I, I appreciate that, this, Bernard. You know, um, it's, it's actually awkward for me, too, to do these presentations without really having hands up and answering questions as we go along. Actually, that's actually my preference. But in order for us to do this the, the right way so that everybody is able to participate, we want to get to questions at the end. So I appreciate your enthusiasm. Um, hey, guys, I'm here also, Wanda. Hey, Siobhan, how are you? I'm doing fine, Wanda. Thank so you. I have my little hand up there. So when we're ready for questions. Yes, um, Joanza and uh, Selena, we're going to get to you. Thank you. Okay, okay. thanks. Um, so as, as already, so one, one so again, there's a, I mentioned the automatic recipients. Um, and there are, and I mentioned the non-filer enter payment here in um, system. And you do not have to use that system. Again, if you're going to get the money automatically, you do, you do not have to do anything whatsoever. You don't have to even look at irs.gov. You do not have to do anything whatsoever. Okay. Um, the only people who would have to, who, who get the money automatically that would have to do anything are people who get money automatically, but have a dependent who is under 17 years of age. Okay. So um, a lot of us, you know, we've taken care of um, um, children and we get money automatically. Um, we would not get the benefit for, for that child. So the IRS gave folks until, uh, first of all, the, the first cutoff dead, deadline was April 22nd. Um, if you receive Social Security benefits, you had until April um, 22nd to report that child on the non-filer system. Um, otherwise, you'd have to wait until you file your tax return next year you know, to get I'm, on, I'm at a meeting. Um, the, the others, but then after some advocacy, they, they made it that um, you had until May I'm 5th. I'm at a meeting. You had until May 5th to, if you received um, VA or SSI, you had until May 5th to report your children. So unfortunately, that those that April 22nd and May 5th deadline have now passed, completely um, gone um, as of what yesterday or day before yesterday. So... Unfortunately, if you receive an automatic benefit and you have children under the age of 17, you'd have to wait until next year to get the benefit for that ch for those children. OK. Um, and another really important thing I need to mention is that there are people who it would actually be beneficial for them to file a tax return um, instead of simply going through the IRS system and claiming this stimulus payment. The IRS system I'm is only for this. The IRS system is only for the stimulus payment, okay? So if your income is low enough, you may need to file a tax return and get, you know, the other benefits. For example, if you worked, um, you know, earned a little bit of income, you earned maybe $6,000 a year, you had taxes withheld from that $6,000, let's say $600. Then basically, if you file a tax return, you're not going to have to pay any taxes. You'll get the $600 back. So you may as well just file a return, click, get your get your refund, and top of the refund, you will also get the economic stimulus payment. So there are a lot of people that it's actually, um, it would be beneficial for them to actually file a tax return. Because one thing folks don't realize is that when you go into this non-filer system on the irs.gov, it actually takes the place of a tax return. So then you would have to file a return later on anyway on paper. Um, and nobody really wants to do that. So sometimes it's actually better just to file a return now um, in order to get your refund plus the um, the economic stimulus payment, okay? Um, I'm just gonna go really, really quick. I know people are not um, really interested, you are really interested in the stimulus part, but again, I do think it's, it's beneficial to a lot of people to file returns. Um, so you're required to file a return if your income is for a single person, $12,200 and over, or a, a married couple, $24,400 and over. However, so again, if your income is below those thresholds, you're not required to file a return, but it would be really beneficial to file a return anyway to get all the other benefits that would be available to you. Um, for example, um, if your income is low enough and you have a child, you may be able to get the, um, the earned income tax credit, which is um, for one child, $3,526, up to $3,526. 
So you would get that benefit. You would get all your with um, taxes that were withheld from your paycheck, plus get the economic stimulus payment. So again, it's a, it's really beneficial for a lot of people to file tax returns instead of simply claiming this economic stimulus um, um, benefit. Um, I know I went through pretty fast, and I but I, I'm curious to. I really really want to get to the questions. Um, I I could go on and on about this tax stuff. I've been doing it for for quite some time, <laughs> so. Uh, but I, it's, it's always I was happy to to present and to um, to speak to um, folks who are interested in hearing about it. So again, the economic stimulus it should be automatic. If it's if it's if you don't get it automatically, you go through the non-filer um, system on IRS.gov. If you do not want to go through that system, you simply file a tax return and you can get the benefits that way. Um, the the stimulus payment is protected from state taxes, federal taxes. You do not have to report it on your on your um, 2020 tax return. Um, it's actually it's also doesn't count against you um, for certain public assistance benefits. Um, it, it doesn't count against you for for anything really. If you get that money by accident for some reason, um, let, let's say you you um, were supposed to get only twelve hundred and you get twenty four hundred for whatever reason because the IRS is moving so quickly to get this money out. So if you get it by accident you're actually not required to send it back to the IRS. The only time we're telling people to send that money back to the IRS is if they're undocumented and shouldn't have received it in the first place. So it's the only time- Thank you so much. It's been really helpful. Question is, where do people contact oh, um, to we're find gonna, out- We're going to go ahead and have those- packets? We're going to go ahead and have those questions addressed towards the end, which I think will be now, but we're going to do it in Pardon order. Me, excuse me. It's okay. So we're going to go ahead and add your name to the list that we already have. All so right. as a heads up for folks, we have Bernard, Wanda, Wilfredo, Jay Guns. And please tell me who that was just now. Who was that that started to act? Hi, sorry, I had to unmute. Uh, this is Kay, long time at, um, ally advocate. Okay, so then you, you will be next, you will be, um, you will be after Jay Guns and then we'll have Althea. That's the order we'll go in, okay? So Bernard- Sure, sure, go, thank you, so sorry. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, brother. Okay, thank you very much. Once again, my name is Bernard. Okay, um, I'm on disability, all right? Now, I did get my stimulus uh, check, but I was I was overdraft. They took $400. Now, I thought they're not supposed to touch your stimulus uh, check, but they did. Yeah, yeah. That's, so, that's absolutely right. So what happened is that in the, in the beginning, um, a, a lot of banks, a lot of individuals, because again, it took, it took the state a while to realize that this was going to happen. So there were some people such as yourself who may have had an overdraft and the bank took that money. So you, you, you had, let's say you had negative $400 in the bank account. The stimulus money went in. You, have, you only have access, instead of having access to $1,200, you only have access to $800. So right. you, need to call, you need to call the bank up and, and inform the bank that that was a stimulus deposit and the bank should refund you that $400. If they do not, um, you know, you, you could contact us, but but basically, the, the because the attorney general made a proclamation and made a, an order stating that this money is protected, then basically you need to go back the bank. If the bank does not refund you this money, um, this, you need to um, file a complaint to the AG's office and they'll respond pretty quickly. Okay, okay but, you. but you should get that money. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, Wanda, Miss Wanda, may you please unmute yourself? Your turn. Yes, sweetie. Hi, thank you. Um, so I want to say hi to everyone on the line. Um, this is your board chair. Uh, just a quick thing, uh, Siobhan. Um, what happens to, let's say, an, an ex-incarcerated individual, such as, let's say, my husband, right? We're legally married. We did get um, 1200 in um, when I know it's supposed to be more for a couple. Um, my other question is that he is not claiming my taxes. He doesn't have a bank account. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, basically. And so he hasn't heard anything. He hasn't received anything. Right. Um, and so my second thing to go into that is that they're saying there's a second stimulus check that's supposed to come out. Is that accurate? And maybe would that be the second portion of that? Finally, okay, my last thing is on mm -hmm. the SNAP, is everybody supposed to receive a double on their SNAP plus then regular monthlies? Or because this is what people have been hearing. Some people are getting a stimulus on the SNAP as well. Um, I haven't heard anything for myself, but other people have been receiving it. Do you know anything on that? 
Okay, thank you. Um, so if, with regards to your first question, um, you mentioned that your your husband uh, was in, incarcerated. So number one, if you are incarcerated, you do not qualify for the stimulus payment. However, home, your right? husband he's is home, right, right, he's home, exactly. Okay. So he should qualify. So my question to you is, when was the last, you don't, and you said you don't file a joint return. When was the last time he filed his own tax return? He's never done taxes. Right. Um, does he receive any be benefits such as SSI or he's anything like that? He's on um, NASA, and also when he applies for his SSI, they tell him he's not qualified because right. my income is supposed to cover him and I'm in an SSD. Right. So here you go. So that's so that's what's going on. So he does not qualify for any automatic payments. Okay. So he needs to go into the non-filer system non to let the to let the IRS know that he is around. This is his contact information. So he's going to have to put his name, social security number, date of birth into the non-filer system in order for them to to send him his money. He's going to also have to put in, you said he, he would have to put in his, um either his direct deposit inf information, which is always best um, and the quickest way to get the money, or it would be, um, or they would have to, they would mail him a, a physical check, which would which is going to take extra time, but he should okay. get that money. With yeah, because I, I, mm -hmm. yeah, I also heard that people that didn't have any bank accounts, that, that was where I was going with what you just said, just to piggyback, um, are supposed to receive, that would be the last people that would receive between two and three months. Is that accurate? If they have no type of information like such, I just said. So not quite, but their, their, their payments would definitely be delayed compared to folks who would get it automatically. So I don't think it would be two to three months because it goes based on income. People whose income is under 10,000 get it first, then under 20,000 get it after. So it's a weekly rollout um, based on your income. So if his, if he had no income, then basically he would be he would be still in the first set of people. But because it's so delayed, you know, it still may end up being a couple months anyway, just because he's okay. delayed in, in requesting it. All um, right, but now, you suggest that he should fill out that form just yes. in case to mm -hmm. try to start you the should. process. All right. yeah. Thanks, Siobhan. No problem. And the second stimulus, I do not know the details about the second stimulus payment. Um, but this, but your husband should get the first round anyway. And I think everybody should still qualify for the second round, but um, we don't have many, many details are, are on that. Um, okay, the SNAP payment, I actually do not know um, anything about SNAP, unfortunately. What we're trying to do, we're actually trying to make SNAP, SNAP recipients get it automatically. So from what I understand, SNAP has not been increased as far as I know. Um, what, what has been increased though is unemployment. If you are on, on unemployment, you should qualify for an additional $600 a week um, in order, um, and on top of your regular stimulus payment. So in, in one month, that ends up being about $2,400 at least on top of whatever other benefits you're getting. So um, that's what's been, been increased. Um, right. and, then, but not, and then finally, as a suggestion to your firm, um, is that something you guys can look into? Because I mean, I've had several clients come up to me and say that they have received, you know, the SNAP thing. So I'm just trying to figure it out because when- I I I Let me find out. Here, if you put your, your let me find out for, for you first because I don't know anything about this now. I did not realize it was supposed to be increased. So I'll, I'll get yeah. back to you. you. You know, reach out to Selena and Jawanza and, and then I, I could get come roll back up to them. Great. Thank you, Siobhan. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, up next, Thank and you, just baby. so, no problem. Just so folks know where they stand in the stacks right now, um, we're going to have Alfredo um, ask his question. Then we're going to go to Jay Guns. K, who was on the phone, I believe. I'm sorry if I didn't hear your name correctly. I put you down as K. Um, Althea, and then um, Sienna. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I believe I heard you say it a different way. Um, that's the order that we have. So, Alfredo, go ahead with your question. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, first and foremost, um, I would like to um, tell everybody that I am a uh, over 19 of the driver. Um, I was diagnosed um, from the time last month and I was in my poetry. And I would like to thank a lot of people from both New York who have been very supportive for my time. Um, again, my name is Wilfredo. I am a user student of the senator. And my question to, um, to you is, um, the they mentioned about what about if somebody's on pending exercise? Um, I am in court proceedings. Um, I am in court proceedings, but due to um, lack of certain documentation, um, my court case, my court has been um, extended. But because of the coronavirus, now you know, saying now it's, 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 it's
it's even um, a trend that's even longer because we don't know what when you get back into sports. Um, as far um, and then I also got a question as far as people in public um, public assistance, um, do they qualify for the stimulus tax? Um, do they? Um, as far I know, I, I I do got the information on the SNAP. Um, basically, people who um, receive the maximum um, SNAP, which is one hundred ninety four dollars for singles, you know, they are not qualified to get extra SNAP because they already miss. Um, they already get maximum um, okay. food stamps. Um, those who have children and our SNAP, they are more qualified to get it unless the maximum. Um, so that that information that I did get, and that is accurate information when it comes down to the staff. Um, uh, my thing is, what about the cash assistance that we get from um, for public assistance? Um, is that part of the stimulus type or not? Okay, thank you for um, referring to appreciate your, your question. So I'll, let me see if I could go in order. So at uh, first, I'll actually not not quite in order, but I appreciate your your um, um, input on SNAP. Um, you, I just did a quick um, um, search uh, on HRA's website, and yes, um, it is. It is so the increased SNAP for folks who are not yet at the maximum. The increased SNAP is not part of the stimulus package, but it's part of the the, the state's response to assist people who are suffering from who have been impacted by COVID nineteen. So it's not directly part of stimulus, but it's still the state is re, state's response to COVID nineteen. Um, and then, another question you said you said you do qualify for SSI but you have not received it. Um, unfortunately, what that means is that you will not be part of the automatic um, recipients of this of, um, of the stimulus package either. So you would have to either go into the non-file system. So you would either have to go into the non-file system or wait until you file your tax return in 2021. So uh, again, it, because you, you, you haven't qualified yet, um, as far as the SSI system um, knows about you, even though your paperwork might be in order, even though everything is good to go, because you're not in the system yet, you do not qualify. So you'd have to wait on that. Um, now, PA, that's again, that's a group that's not automatically eligible. There are a, a lot of folks on PA who may have, um, whether they have income, whether they qualify for something such as SSI or whether they have disability. So the only, so yeah, so if, if you have another form of benefits, you'll get it automatically, but PA itself does not qualify you um, right now for an automatic check. So you'd have to go into the non-filer system or you'd have to file a tax return. It's again, this is an, it's actually another thing that Legal Aid is working on. We're trying to work on the PA and SNAP angles because there are a number of people who are, who really would benefit from, from this. People who are, on, who are um, um, experiencing homelessness, people who are at the various lowest um, ladders of our socioeconomic system who would benefit from an automatic payments who didn't who, who should not be required to file a tax return unfortunately we're just not there yet so they would have to file or go through that non file system thank you so much thank you thank you for that question up next we have jay guns is your time brother to share your question audio now unmuted um yeah uh, i'm like Okay, all right. Now I'm totally blind here, so like, excuse me, if my phone does the extra talking from the messages and stuff. But don't anyway, apologize. We're happy you're with us. My question, my question is, okay, I'm on Social Security. I get uh, SSI and SSD, so like, I kind of was wondering, like, and I'm also with the uh, SECU Bank, so like, I get direct deposit with that, with that stem, with that check. Would that stimulus be going there, and when would that? We when would that dispense? Like, that's a great I, question. Never... That's that's a great question, Jay Guns. I, I appreciate it. In fact, I should have mentioned that before. So, whatever means that you receive your your benefits, whether it's SSI, SSD, um, VA, whatever it is, you will get the payments the exact same way. So, if you already get a direct deposit, it should have been direct, directly deposited. If you get it on your on, the, on that um, benefits card. You should get it on there. So actually, your payments, you need to. You should actually um, figure out what happened to it because you should have received it already. You should have been part of the first round. I, I'm assuming 
that if you're an SSI and SSD, I'm assuming that you would have been pretty much one of the first rounds to get this payment automatically. That was my thoughts too, yeah. but um, they sent us a notification in in my in my uh, message inbox on my mobile online mm -hmm. account, but they did not dispense that amount to my account. Now I have a um. I have uh, uh, child support references on my account now on my on my loan thing, but their balances is, are zeroed out. So there's no hmm. there's no money owed there. So so it's it's I want so the accounts are still open even though they're saying zero. Right. So I wonder. So you should also so the, I, if I I'm gonna put I don't know if I put anything in the in the chat if you will be able, if it will read it to you. So maybe you should um, swing back. Touch back in um, in touch. We get back in touch with Selena and uh, Jawanza. But basically, you should. There's a, a tracking system <laughs> to track your your um, stimulus check to figure out what happened to it. So you should definitely track it first. But it's possible okay. that even though you have a zero account on child support, it could have been um, directed there first for them to make sure that you don't owe them anything before it comes to you. Because again, oh. yeah. So it's possible that even though it's zero now it depends on how long it was zero but if the irs already has um an order to send it to child support it might go there first see that you have a zero account and then come zero bounce and then come back to you so you should check um get my payment check there then check with child support and figure it out that way okay okay yeah yeah that sounds like a good idea thank yeah. you no problem thank you for um, that yeah. Thank you for that question. I'm just going to take note that Siobhan had put in the, the chat for those who are unable to see it. Um, the website he's referencing is www.irs.gov backslash coronavirus backslash get dash my dash payment. Okay. Thank you. Um, and so we're going to go uh, to the next person that had a question. In the that was Jay. I'm sorry, not Jay. K. Was it K? Yes, K. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for everybody who's organizing this. This is really helpful. Um, so, question is to you, sir, is with regards to getting through. There's millions of people, of course, but have not been able to access my funds via the card that's administered, I guess, by this bank. And so did all the things that I needed to do to update the email, use the mailing address with the post office and hopefully going to get that. But it's been very difficult to get through. Try to create an account online with, you know, the labor and get to a certain point and it just cannot continue because it keeps saying timed out. So that's my question. Is there's, there an alternative way to try to get through with regards to just doing online and making things easier? Uh, sorry, I, I missed. So, so what, what card are we talking about? Well, I guess there's a, a card that is an alternate to direct deposit, which is what I was trying to get online. From um, the, was, was, it from the, was, it from the, was it from the IRS, that IRS card? Or was no, it from I think it's, I guess it's called there's a bank called Key Bank and they oh. administer there's a card you can get or you can get a direct deposit. That's interesting. So I didn't realize that. So I the only cards I thought it could go to were um were actually the benefits cards for people on SSD, SSI, etc. Um I thought you could actually for as far as I knew could not go to those um third party well, cards. I don't have SSI or SSD. Exactly. No, that's what I'm saying. So what, what would happen is that I'm hi, I'm on. I just Come wanted on. to jump in and yeah. say that actually what has ha what has happened is that people are now able to access these prepaid cards, uh, uh, um, cash right. cards. So yeah. even uh, the cash app, if you have a, a, a physical cash app card related to that app, they are now promoting that you can have your stimulus payment directed uh, there. So it may be along with KeyBank and a couple of other folks I that see. have that. They're um, allowing folks to then have their funds direct deposit to the prepaid cards. Oh, thank you for that. I did not realize that, you know, things are moving so fast. But I, so here's what I need you to do. Hey, Siobhan, and mm -hmm. also the direct deposits are pretty much being sent not to the, um, like, let's say, Haza gives cash, not to those cards, yes, not to the not benefit to cards, but to the bank accounts themselves. That's right. Okay so, so, okay, so first thing, again, I did not realize that they were sending them to those third-party um, cards. 
So what I would advise you to do is go to the, the Get My Payment site. And if it says that the funds have been distributed, then you should go to check with the bank that's issued that card. Um, because what could happen is that if you didn't open that, if you only opened that account recently and the IRS had already distributed the payments, then what, what, what happens is that a lot of individuals who filed returns in the past, they may have gotten a direct deposit not onto their own account, but on the preparer's account. So folks like H&R Block, um, Jackson, you would they create an account with the bank that your money goes into first. Um, and then they take their fees and then they, they send you the difference. So what happens is that the, after the tax season, they close those accounts. So those, that money could have been bounced back right to the IRS. So for, if so, the same thing would have happened if you only recently opened those cards or opened an account. It might have actually gotten bounced back to the IRS, but the only way you would know about it is by checking the Get My Payments um, M tool that I, I, I put in the link, or you could actually call your bank to figure out if they received it. If the money bounced back to the IRS, then they will not try a second time. They will actually issue you a paper check to your last known address. So that's, unfortunately, that's the only way that they've been doing that. So um, I'm, I'm happy that they are, you know, allowing third-party cards, but unfortunately it could still be delayed and they would have to issue you a paper check. Thank you for I that. I hope that answered your question. Okay, did that answer your question? Thank you. Um, that was really helpful. Thank you very much. Yes. You're welcome. Okay, you. great. Um, so next up, we have Sienna's question. She wants me to just go ahead and read it for her. So um, she wants to know, some people are having uh, issues with cashing their checks, particularly cash uh, uh, check cashing uh, places are taking money from the checks significantly more than the actual fee. And so she just wants to know, is there any guidance on this? And also just maybe raise awareness on others that may have experienced this um, and whether or not there's any rules around mm -hmm. them all of a sudden charging more to cash this specific check. Yeah, so they should not be charging more. That's number one. If you if you if they ha are charging more, I think you should report them to the um, the AG's office because there are a lot of scams out there. There are a lot of folks who are taking advantage of the of the fact that a lot of individuals and now have this twelve hundred dollar payment. Um, so they look at it as a way for them to make money themselves. So number one, they should not be charging you anything extra simply because it's a stimulus check. They may be they may be at, um, additional um, requirements, however, to provide um, ID just to make sure that um, that you are the person who who is entitled to this money because because again, if if they are required have additional identification requirements, I would not be too upset about that because it's a government check, um, so maybe they want to protect themselves. But anything to do with additional fees, that's improper, and that should, and you should report them and get your money back. Can I make a comment, um, Siobhan, yes. around that? Um, so actually, they also do that when people um, use their benefit card. Um, they, they, you know, they're getting, they're taking a fee off of people, um, which that shouldn't be as well. Um, the yeah, part uh -huh. about the, the check um, is because normally because of the size of the check and the amount, the check cashing places try not to cash it. So what they tell you to do is open a bank account. Right. right. And then so if you don't want to open that bank account, they have to charge according to the amount of the check. That's where the percentage comes out. Depending no, I, on right. I, I completely get that. But it sounds like the, the person who asked the question sounds like it's saying she's saying that the check they charge in even more than they should have charged based well, on the amount of the check. Again, that's because it goes on the amount of the check. Yeah, if it's if it's based on the amount of the check, that's completely proper. But if it's right. more simply because it's a stimulus check and they're taking advantage, then that is a hundred percent improper. They should find out to make sure that it's yeah. the proper fee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need to figure out if it's a proper fee, and if it's not, you know, you could give us a call and we could figure out what to do about it. But um, normally we would um, file a complaint with the Department of Financial Services or even with the AG's office, and trust me, they respond very, very quickly to those complaints. Thank you. Um, so next we have in the chat, uh, Comrade Don. And I, just before you go, brother, if, um, so we're at the end of the stack, I'm questions ready. in the stack. So if anybody else has questions, now is the okay. time to put something in the chat box, or raise the hand icon, or once Comrade Don is done with his question and answer, you can go ahead and speak. Um, what happened no, to I Althea? I, I got a Oh, I'm so sorry, Althea, I do apologize. You're absolutely right. 
Pomeran Donovey hold on a second. There was Althea. Her name was listed. I do apologize. Thanks, Althea. Go ahead and answer your question. Ask the question. Okay, my question basically is, I'm sorry. My question basically is, is I haven't received my check yet. Um, I do, I am on disability and it does go into my direct deposit. So if I haven't received it yet, is that just that is taking some time because of my income or is it for some other reason um if you are on disability so disability is 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 based on it's not based on being low income so yes it could be that you just haven't been that you're just not in the cycle yet um but definitely check go to that um, get my payment information website Site, and it will tell you exactly where it is and what the holdup is. It should have, um, the payment should be automatic. Go to wherever your, your disability payment is, whether it's on the card or whether it's on your bank account, it should be automatic. Okay, one more question. Even though I haven't uh, filed any taxes because I'm on disability? That's right. That's right. Because because you're one of the uh, you're one of the automatic recipients of that of that payment. Correct. And even if you were not an automatic recipient and you had filed 2018, it would go to the 2018 bank account information. Right. Okay. Devon, so, can I share some info? Um, also, yes. um, there was also on the the first, um, actually in April was the first round. So in May, there's supposed to be the, the people that didn't receive it yet. They should be in that route. I also suggest that you call your bank because um, that's what I did. And, 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 and it was like, wow, it, it, it popped up in there. So you can always call your bank Perfect. and you know track it that way as well. No, yes. I've been I've been tracking it through my bank. I mean, the bank sends text messages to me all the time, and I happen to have that app on my phone. So I'm looking at my account; it still hasn't shown up. And yes, I'm so okay, so go so to the get my payment. Right, go to the right, go to the go to the IRS website. Um, get my payment and track it there. Um, okay. It's, yeah. Okay. Then my other other uh, alternative would be to file a non-filer's tax return. Would that be it? Yes. Then your alternative would be to file a non-filer return. And the only problem with that, so if, and if, and, and right, and then you would get the payment automatically because um, you would have put your correct address, you would have ensured that your bank inf information was correct, and then you would get it. But that would be like the most delayed um, process. So if, if you, it's, it's not going to make it any, any quicker, unfortunately, it's still going to be delayed. Okay, and it doesn't matter whether or not I've, I did some work during that period of time, and I did have income. In you're talking addition. about twenty. You're talking about 2019, right? Correct. Then, then you might as well just file a, a tax return because you would be entitled to to your your refunds. You would be entitled to other benefits. So, if you're going to go through the the, the trouble of doing the non file system, which they say it's quick, but it's in my experience, a lot of my clients are having difficulties with it. I would okay. say just file a return. Siobhan, okay. there's also a difference, though, if she's part-time as well, right? Yes, that's absolutely right. But um, the, the, because, as I mentioned earlier, the, the filing requirement for a single person, whether it's full-time or part-time, it's $12,200. So even if you're not required to file because your income is below that threshold, um, you should file the return and get your, your refund on top of the stimulus. Okay, but if my income is above the $12,000, I still... Then you would... I should, right. should I have to file or should I not have to file? I would say you definitely have to file. <laughs> really? Because you have a filing requirement to begin with. So uh, so, so why would you do the non filer system and file a, ret a paper return after July 15? You might as well just pay file the paper return or, or actually an e-file return now. Okay, and that's something that I could probably just go online and do, correct? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So you go to okay. IRS Free File. You go through okay. the Internal Revenue Service website to make sure that you're able to do that. And you're able to, and if you have any questions, you could feel free to reach out to, to my office. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you're it. You're welcome. Good luck. All right, I'm good. Thanks, Althea. Um, Thank uh, Comrade Zahn, go ahead and unmute yourself. And while you do that, I just want to share, well, Fredo made an excellent point. Just be careful. If the cash app, while I did mention that, that was an endorsement to use their services, but just know and be aware that there are hackers sometimes that, that do have scams. So just be very mindful of what you use if you are going to do the prepaid um, card situation. So I just want to put that out there. We are no way endorsing that. Um, Comrade Don, thank you for your patience. Yes, I got a complaint first. My complaint is that for some reason today, I, it's, I could barely hear it. Uh, my volume is at the max, but I could barely hear it. I, it went out a while ago, but it's real low. 
but uh, I wanted to clarify some things. Uh, the IRS and uh, the government website put out a, a notice. I shared it to some people on Facebook. Is that anybody that gets uh, disability uh, SSI benefits, they're doing the second round and they're telling them to give them till May to complete the second round for anybody that got direct deposit or direct express card they receive their benefits there on disability, SSD, SSI, whatever. So give them, I, I would suggest that people give them till May because they're in the second phase of that. So many millions of people is getting this shit. So they're in the second phase. I would also caution people with, uh, this hasn't been discussed today and I, I think uh, people should know this. If you're on SSI, if you're on disability, veterans, any of that, <laughs> your check is not coming from the RS. Those particular checks are coming from the Treasury Department. They separated those people. So IRS is sending everybody else there to file taxes and blah, 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 blah. But if you're on any kind of SSI, uh, SSI uh, disability uh, insurance or whatever you receive, your money is coming from the Treasury Department. Well, keep in mind that the IRS is, is part of the Treasury Department. Um, so you yeah, can still check your payments. It, I, yeah, you can yeah, still check yeah, your payments at the part, same website. Mm -hmm. I know it's a part of the department, but the section, the section mm -hmm. that the check will issue for SSI disability and SSI uh, payments will come strictly from Treasury. Everybody else will come strictly from the branch that deals with just IRS tax returns and all that. But they said the second wave is coming for, I, I didn't receive mine yet on direct uh uh, my express card so they said give it till may in the second round right now so i'm gonna give it till the end of may i, I think after that you have some complaint. that's all i have to say thank you thank you for that yes yeah, so um right. of course there's this the second wave which is the new stimulus so we we don't it should work the same way the first wave works but again remember people you may qualify for both waves so keep keep that in in mind okay all right, thank you for that comment. Lavelle, I know you were on the stacks. Lavelle, are you still there to answer uh, ask your question? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm going um I'm going to I'm going to pass. Basically my questions was answered, so I'm not going to hold them. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um I'm just going to scan right now what I see. Um I don't see any hands up. I didn't see any names in the stack. Uh, if anybody would like to ask a question, the floor is open. You got my money. That's all I want to know. <laughs> so, I wanted to ask, uh, there was a gentleman that said he did some outreach out in the Bronx. Is he still on the line? Um, I, don't, I don't believe that he is. That was... Uh, Will. Uh, okay. Um, all right. I, I wanted is there, to. Is there any more questions for Siobhan? Mm, okay. Well. Just so you know, that you, that, you that, that kudos to you that you thank got you this entire kind of question. No, thank that, you. You, that you. were that thorough. <laughs> so <laughs> we are super impressed that you <laughs> held it down like that. Uh, just I appreciate the questions. Thank you. Um, thank you, if, you want, if you would like to get in touch with Siobhan, his number at the Legal Aid Society tax unit. I'm talking slowly so folks have time to get a pen, a paper, a phone, to take a picture, <laughs> however you want to do it. I'm talking really slow. But if you would like to get in contact with our friend Shervon Small at the Legal Aid Tax Society unit, contact number is 212 426 Three zero one three. I shall repeat two one two. I have a five year old at home, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> Four two six three zero one three. And again, this is to get in contact with Sharon and team at hey, hey, the Legal Aid Society. I am going to ask one last round. Any questions before we thank Siobhan? for his time, let him roll out, and then we can continue on with our meeting. Are there any further questions? Let me go get my money. Yes, yes, I got a question. <laughs> okay, this will be the last question, then we're gonna let this gentleman yeah. go. 
Oh, that's good. I like I like to be the last one. Let me let me say that. Um, oh, let me, so, um, um, so are the stimulus checks um, making the regular uh, tax checks late? <laughs> That's a, that's a great question, but it's, it's not supposed to because this money is supposed to be com a completely separate process. Um, yes, you're receiving it, you know, the same way your benefits would have been received. Yes, you may have re may be receiving it from the Treasury or the Internal Revenue Service, but it's a, it's supposed to be completely separate. There's separate phone lines and everything. So it should not be, it should, it should not delay your regular tax refund. Unfortunately, on the regular tax refund side, um, we have found that, you know, the IRS is basically shut down. A lot of folks are working from home. Um, the phone lines, um, I cannot, you know, the, the, the phone lines I normally call for the, the tax practitioners have been closed since March. The regular phone line that other people could check have also been closed um, more recently. So it's extremely difficult on the regular IRS side to get any information. So everything has to be done online um, through the website that I've given you. And, I, I I haven't heard that the refunds have been delayed, but it is quite possible, but it's not because of the stimulus, okay? I, I, I'm gonna say that I think so because um, they already sent me 2018 and 2019 uh, was done, they were done together, but I was told you gotta wait a while. So yeah. I, 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 just, I understand, I'm not. And, and also if it was a paper, if it was a paper tax return, those are not yeah. getting, those are definitely not getting processed until, until after July 15th. Oh, that's okay. I, I'm I'm okay. It, it's, it's not a rent is paid, so I'm good. Um, Sounds good. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the question. Well, I really, thank, you the, thank you for the depth of information. No uh, problem. I, I really appreciate the questions. I think you you folks had some really amazing and made me think about a, a lot. So and it was it was great being here. I, I look forward to another invite. I'll be happy to come back. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Take care, folks. Have a great day. Yeah, please come back. We need you, brother. We need you. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. We're here. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thank Alina. Thanks, Thank Joanza. So Take care. We appreciate you're, you. Thank you. You're welcome. Me. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Jawanza, we are going to let you take it away for the remainder of the agenda today, if there was one, I believe. Yeah, um, the, the, thank you so much, Lena, for facilitating that section. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, I am really into the idea of carving out space for open discussion. So if anybody wants to talk about a particular thing as it relates to our organizing, um, you know, now's the time for you to bring that up. Um, you know, uh, I don't have any agenda beyond what we've already covered. Um, I just wanted to make sure I got folks the opportunity to get those kinds of questions answered just because I noticed through the process of navigating accessing the stimulus package that it was very difficult. So, um, so, um, oh shit, sorry. So I wanted to make sure um, we thought about it, our team together, um, like uh, Selena, our homeless union organizer, Biz, our youth union organizer, um, Tatiana, our civil rights organizer, and also um, Nick Malinowski and the whole vocal team really thought that it would be important for us to make sure that our community, our membership was not left out of this sort of stimulus, which could have a huge impact in this moment where income is sort of like difficult to come by. Um, and so, I just wanted to also uplift that when we have these kinds of like big moments that cut across everybody's lives, like we can organize these kinds of meetings. So anytime anybody has something that you know is affecting many people in your community, like bring it to the organizers because we can host these kinds of conversations. Um, Selena just tapped her networks and relationships and we, we were able to get Shervon through the Legal Aid, Legal Aid Society. So that kind of thing can continue to happen. Um, as it as it comes up and another reason that we wanted to have this meeting and honestly I anticipated a lot more folks to get on just because um, I wanted to make sure that we didn't need to launch a campaign to make sure that New York City and New York State actually make sure that communities that are left behind which we heard about at the beginning of Siobhan's presentation undocumented people people that don't have a, a social security number people married to people without a social security number sort of being left out of this um, stimulus package um, sort of reflects the sort of, I think, overarching sort of political values that I don't, that don't align with the organization's values. Um, we don't want to leave anybody behind. We don't, wanna, we don't want to leave any community behind. The stimulus for us is not about the economy, but about people first. Um, so uh, these are the kind of things we should be thinking about as, um, 
as as people engaged, as organizers, as political leaders, like who is being left out? Why are they being left out? And why is the bureaucratic system itself so complicated for people to be able to access these critical funds in a time of mass death? That's where we are. And so I think for me, it was important for us to have this sort of conversation about the material needs of our membership and like how do we get folks, you know, access to capital for their own lives, but it's also about pointing out the sort of structural and political failings of the existing um, regime, the Trump administration. How is Governor Cuomo not protecting all of it, all, all New Yorkers, documented and undocumented? How is Mayor de Blasio protecting all New Yorkers, documented or undocumented, housed or unhoused? You know, so this is the kind of like critical analysis and awareness that we have to have, because when moments like these happen, this is a crisis moment that will last beyond this generation, the impacts. We want to make sure that any kind of solutions that we put forward, that they remember and bring along the people that are most vulnerable and center those people and hear directly from those people. So um, with that said, um, folks can you know bring up other conversations, any comments, anything you want. Um, now's the time. Uh, the floor Where is- Where the videos at? Where the videos at? The, the I, video. need see, I, I need to see chapter videos. Oh yes, so so to Pedro's point, on everybody, I need to see chapter videos. I'm gonna send an email in the next um, day, or it's like probably tomorrow. I'm gonna host a Zoom meeting next week, where we're gonna have folks come on. If you want to, you can record a campaign message, which I'll you know edit and then put on Twitter and on Facebook and try to push it out there. Um, you should also know that I'm going to be reaching out to folks about a meeting on the 14th um, of May about uh, vocals. Um, this is a New York City specific thing, Pedro, so I'm sorry, but like um, the New York City budget um, is leaving out a lot of people, is making a lot of massive cuts. And uh, we're going to have a, a budget meeting um, for all of our New York City um, leaders and also also leader tour in solidarity with um, downstate leaders. Um, so that stuff is coming. I'm going to move that forward. Um, I know Selena has a homeless union assembly tomorrow, May 8th. Um, you can email Selena to get that link and that information. Um, if you check in the guide to your week, the email I send every Sunday, it's been in Jeremy's name, but I'm the one who's sending it. Um, it uh, Selena's meeting information is there. So if you type into your email guide to your week, Jeremy, the most recent one will be the one with all the links for the meetings that are still happening this week. Um, I'm going ahead. I'm putting that information, not the link, but I'm putting the information in the chat on how to contact me. But if you're interested in joining and receiving that link and it's just easier to, to text me, feel free to text me 347-309-6779. Uh, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was going to repeat it one last time. 347 309-6679. Two, one, and I will go ahead and send you the information for tomorrow's Homelessness um, Union Assembly. Um, and you can come check out what it is that our vocal leaders um, and HU have been up to, the campaigns that we are running and a part of, and just, uh, you know, having an open space for people who are directly impacted by this amid COVID to talk about um, how this is directly impacting them and the issues that they want to bring to the forefront. Sister Selena, can you please hook me up with that? And at what time is that happening? 2 p.m. tomorrow via Zoom. Um, okay. Actually, Selena, to that point, um, I don't want to put her on the spot, but I wonder if Rosetta Johnson wanted to just um, say a few words about her most recent experiences, um, just to set her up. Um, you know, the homeless union is participating in a campaign, the Ho Homeless Can't Stay Home campaign, you know, demanding 30,000 units of hotels in New York City for um, people experiencing homelessness. And Rosetta has been like a huge, important, like, voice and fight. Um, for homeless New Yorkers across um, the state, really, um, and also penned a very powerful op-ed in the Daily News. And I also sent in that guide to your week, which you can read. I don't know, Rosetta, if you wanted to say anything um, about your experiences, sort of like that you think people would be benefit, benefit from hearing from you. Well, I don't know if they can everybody hear me? Um, yeah, it's a little low, Rosetta, but we can hear you. Okay. Um, well, I don't know if they can benefit from me because I, I don't think I'm there yet. But um, yeah, I've been experienced. It's, it's been a long road and it's still going. And I was speaking to Selena today. It, like I said, I'm so 
overwhelmed with everything. Nobody's trying to help. I'm still in my car. As a matter of fact, I'll be in my car tomorrow because my time is up now. But it's it's hard. I really don't. Yeah, I, it's just hard. It's hard. Very hard. I hear that, Rosetta. Um, I, I know Selena wants to say Hello, something. Girl. I wanted to um, mention, Hello. like, um, you know, I, I this is I probably should tell you this personally, directly, but like I think there are winters in our lives. There are moments where everything seems totally gone and absolutely devastating, and that can be the actual reality. Um, but I know from a person who's experienced homelessness myself that um, these moments teach us so much about ourselves, but also about humanity and about the world that we're living in and how how the world can actually be. And Absolutely. I think that people like you, Rosetta, like just even that one op-ed, the times you spoke to the press and you were on Now This, for instance, those moments are a part of the continuum of the work that happens to transform the world. So yeah. if you did not do those things, if you did not share those stories, one, I wouldn't know, but the whole city of New York, the whole state of New York would be lesser able to respond to the realities of what it means to be a person experiencing homelessness. And Absolutely. like you remind me, you said something in that video that reminded me like, this is so important for leadership of directly impacting people because you were like, look, I'm a person experiencing homelessness, X, Y, Z. I mean, here's what I look like. Here's who I am. Like, here's yeah. how I got here. Like we're all regular people. Like there are systems and structures in place that make it almost impossible for people to be able to move forward whenever crisis hits and then add a pandemic on top of that. So like this has nothing to do with you and everything to do with the systems around us. And it is our responsibility to respond and to build new futures. And I, from the bottom of my heart, as a person that's formerly experienced homelessness, as a person that's politically engaged, as a person that organizes with Vocal New York, as a person that wants to build a better world, I thank you so, so much for all the work that you've done. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, can, I, can I jump in, Ms. Rosetta? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, this is Wanda. I'm the board chair for Boca New York, and I want to thank you actually for being on the floor. Um, and you said something a minute ago when we asked you to share a little bit with us. I just wanted to say that um, there's no such thing as you not having anything to input that's going to be of interest to us. You never know what you can say that somebody else can pick up as an, an actually benefit from. So I commend you for go ahead and share with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate everybody. But it's, it's, you know, it's like I'm coming in and I'm listening to everybody. It's like I'm a newcomer and I really don't know everyone's story. So it's like I'm, I'm like, well, what do I have to add to this? But that I'm on the street at this moment, that I'm sleeping in my car at this moment. I'm not getting help from anybody. I write so many letters and emails and send them and nobody help. They say they have all this low income housing. I can show you three letters I received within these three days with low income meaning New York housing where they denied me because of my income. So what's low income to you all? This is public housing. Why are you denying me? So yeah, it, it's thank so you. much. Like I said, yeah. it's, it's a lot. It you is. Know, it, thank you so much, Daryl, that and even after we had the talk today, um, I'm not sure if we're still live on Facebook or whatever, but even uh -huh. after we had the talk today and um, you just having a bandwidth to jump on this call with us this afternoon, yes. number one, I just want to share, like, you are in a space of, of and in a community of like-minded people who truly believe that housing is a human right, mm -hmm. that understands what it's like to be forgotten about by a system, but also have the heart and the grit to push back and demand that we be seen and to demand that we be heard. Um, Rosetta, uh, one, uh, Rosetta was one of the people who um, really magnified our Homeless Can't Stay Home campaign and then was able, she was one of the individuals that was then housed in the GoFundMe campaign um, that was raised by everyday New Yorkers. Um, who decided to do the job that our mayor and governor could not do. So when yeah. you hear about that is saying who, why is no, nobody's helping? Again, to Joanne's point, talking about that system, right? Yeah. That has been uh, designed to purposefully leave people out, right? And we refuse to be left out because we Absolutely. contribute, right? Every day that we fight for our rights and others, we contribute to this 
right? Yeah, because so, if it wasn't for GoFundMe, I mean, if it wasn't homeless can't stay home, yes. I would be in my car for the last week. They housed me in a hotel for this week, but I'm cool with going back to my car because I know that there is people out there that's trying to help me. Selena, Paulette, uh, Helen, all those people have been reaching out to me and helping me, and I appreciate everything. No, but we, we thank you for opening up yourself in that way. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's, it's, we, we thank you because, again, like Jawanda said, your, even your words and your presence, even in this moment and saying, I don't know how to help or I'm still really new to this process in this space is yes. courage, right? And that's yes. giving courage to the next person who may be going through something um, yes. and not understanding the power that they have, right? And so a part of what we do at Vocal is pull out, right? And tap into that power that we sometimes often forget that we have, right? Yes. That power that the system wants us to forget and put in the back of our minds that we're just cogs in the machine, right? So there's yes. nothing more powerful than a membership and leadership led based movement, right? Led by the people. Homeless Can't Stay Home is an example of it being funded by the people, right? Yes. And continuing yes. to push and take what we demand. And that is housing. That is the end to mass incarceration. That is the war, that is the end to the war on drugs and, and the unnecessary deaths of our brothers and sisters. That is the end to unnecessary uh, um, um, spread of AIDS, HIV and Hep C and all those things. So that yeah, is the future that we want to dream towards, right? Because if we get burned out or if we stop, if we get too pessimistic, in this reality, right? And we stop imagining and envisioning the future that we wanna create, we're gonna miss this very critical opportunity right now to ensure that that happens, to keep our 10 toes down and dig our claws into the ground and really push for that. So these right now are the moments and, and, and opportunities for us to build on that we not go back to normal, but that we use in your voice, Rosetta, that we use in your yes. voice, Reginald, that we use in your voice, Danielle, and that we're creating that future of yes. liberation for everybody. And that Absolutely. when I say everybody, I mean us, the people yes. that have been oppressed by this system and continue to call it out and rip it down, essentially. So yes. thank you. Your, yes. your story is your most important asset. It's the most valuable asset. Don't ever think it's not worth anything. Once exactly. you have been heard, you cannot be unheard. Okay. Tell your story. Tell your story. It has Absolutely. power. Tell because your no one story. can tell your story like you can, sweetie. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Your Thank story. you. Flower, may I add something? Yeah, of course. Uh, the mayor said in the press conference that anyone who wants to go and who has no place to isolate, self-isolate, can have a hotel room. How do they get that hotel room? And shouldn't Rosetta be qualified for that? That's a lie. To, it's that, a lie. Yeah. Okay, but should you call 311? What so is the deal? That, that's, that's what our campaign it's has been working thing. on, calling out the shortcomings of that lie, Flowers. That's right. The, thing that okay. we're the second on. thing is, what did they do with the people they took off the train? And wh where are they? And how do we follow that up? I'm okay, complete. Before y'all answer that, can I can I say something to that sister? Sure. Listen, I heard I saw your video and I heard the message and it was powerful. And I, asked, I, I asked Selena, we need to get her over to our meeting so she could talk to some of the brothers and sisters and let them feel what you feel. You understand yes. what I'm saying? Sister, yes. yo, mad Thank love. You. And I don't Thank even you. know you. Mad love. All right. Keep struggling, baby. It's gonna it's gonna be all right. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. I appreciate that. And to the lady that just asked about the mayor saying that if you're on the on the streets and you need a hotel room, blatant lie. I when I heard that, I called three one one. I sent him an email and I have the email response. Go to DHS. They'll put you in a housing. And I let them know. I was like, listen, I'm homeless, but I refuse to lose my life because I'm homeless. That's not an option. I said, these people in there coughing, their people in there, you know, they're sick. They don't want to go to the doctor. So them offering us hotel rooms is a blatant lie. It's not true. It's not true. Um, the other thing I wanted to say um, also, just I think to, to Reginald and Wanda's point, well, before I say that, um, I think um, 
for folks that have questions about this sort of campaign and these shortcomings, you should absolutely go to the Homelessness <laughs> Union Assembly tomorrow um, on Zoom. Um, but to, to the point that Reginald and Wanda were making about your story, Rosetta, and this applies to every leader, um, I think one of the pieces about vocal sort of like um, organizing structure is the underlying belief that, or the acknowledgement that um, one's experience is what gives you an authority on an issue. Like, because you know what it looks like to like live in a car, yeah. nobody cannot tell you what that's like. That's nobody right. cannot tell you what it's not like. And nobody can tell you how you got there except you. So like, right. you have authority now to speak on the issue of homelessness and the issue of like being a woman, the issue of being a black person, combining those things, an issue of being a New Yorker, living in New York City, experiencing homelessness during COVID-19 and knowing what that's like, that gives you authority. So you can have an authoritative voice on the issue of homelessness, hands down. And then yeah. we understand that those kinds of stories, those experiences give you a deeper insight into what kind of policies will work, what kind of what, what ways will policies impact people. So even whenever you're not in your car, because I appreciate the way that you speak into existence right now, here's where I am, because you will not yeah. always be there. That's the work you're doing for yourself. And that's the work that we're doing as a collective. But at the end of the day, you will always have had that experience and you will always have the authority to speak from that experience. And we believe that, that that's what makes you a change agent. And like, yeah. I think, and Vocal New York ain't nothing but a vehicle. It ain't nothing but a, a set of people who have a set of values that we agree on. We have a specific mission and we have a certain kind of tool that we use that we call organizing. Yeah. And like, all we're trying to do is make sure that those stories are the stories that inform policy. And we want to build power to force that, that whenever you say, I want a hotel room tonight, we want to have the power to make the government do it. And that's why we keep having these meetings, why we outreach, why we do political education, why we want to make sure people are taken care of, because you can't build a movement if all yeah. your people are dead. Yes, it's true. It's true because it, they, they, they say they do all this stuff it, it's not true because when DHS, as long as DHS has a hand in anything, it's a failure. And I tell them all the time, I do not want anything. If DHS has a hand, in it, no, thank you. I decline because they're going to do whatever they want to do. They're going to throw you here. They're going to throw you there. Like a lady called me the other day. She was like, oh, I want to come get you. I want to bring you in. Where are you going to bring me? Oh, I'm going to bring you in. I'm going to put you in the shower. I said, no, thank you. She was like, um, okay, well, I want to work with you. I'm going to bring you in. I'm going to put you in a single occupancy room. I said, is that, um, so I wanted her to tell me what it was. She said, oh, it's, you're going to be in a room by yourself. I was like, I already knew what she was talking about because somebody already told me about it. Where I'm going to bring you in and I'm going to put you in a safe haven. It's a, it's a room by yourself. I said, oh, is that the building where you share the bathroom with the whole building? She was like, well, you do, but um, you wear glass, um, mask and gloves. I said, yeah, you wear mask and gloves, but when you got to take your bath, you have to take those masks and those gloves off to utilize the um, restroom. You have to use this with all these people. I said, no, I decline. Then she's going to send a letter saying that I have the letter and I will, I will share it if you need me to share it, um, that I declined because I didn't have my own bathroom. Um, I wanted I wanted to to say um, uh, Jawanza and Selena just for us to keep in mind. Um, I I feel personally um, all these years that um, instead of them spending the amount of money that they spend to put someone in a shelter room, why not just go ahead and pay that money and put them in their own permanent house? Right. I mean it's out there. What you're doing is basically playing around like in, in a revolving door and making people go through things that they shouldn't have to go through when these right. apartments are available. So let's just keep that in mind as well for a campaign. But you're saying that they, yes, there's apartments available. Absolutely. Because I go on New York City Connect every day and fill out those applications. Now though, that's supposed to be New York City housing, mm -hmm. but they're turning you down saying that you do not, oh, look at the puppy behind you. <laughs> they, um, they're, they're saying that you don't make enough money. Mm -hmm. How um, is it New York City housing, but you're supposed, these are the programs that you develop. You develop Section 8, you develop NYCHA, you develop um, whatever else, um, SOCA and, and FEPS, the government, develop these programs, but yet still 
I'm trying to get in one of your New York City housing developments with this program, Section 8, and you're telling me that I do not make enough money. How is that possible when this is your program? This is and your I, program. This is yeah, what and, you gave me. And I can sympathize with that. And this is why I'm, I'm saying, other than spending the money, like the government spends the money on, on putting yeah. someone on a shelter, which is just also another dumb idea to me that is just temporarily and there's always right. a revolving door around it. Mm -hmm. And there's all these empty apartments that we know are yeah. there. Increase, yeah. the, increase the percentage of, you know, apartments that the landlord can go ahead and rent out for people of, you know, minimum wage or whatever and low income versus just giving us a percentage of you can, you have a building of 100, but you can only house 10 when there's a lot of people out here that need these apartments. But they have right? their and, own buildings that they, they put in brand new buildings every day. They could put all these homeless people. All these buildings that they built building up here that they're saying is for low income, they can take all those buildings, those brand, as a matter of fact, there's a new one right here on um, American, right across the street from the Home Depot. They can take, and it says New York City, NYCHA. They can take all those people out of the shelter and put them in those apartments. Mm -hmm. Just like this building, is, they, they just finished building a building over here. They can, all these buildings on Archer, they can take all the people out of the shelter. This is my point, is that they, they build all these buildings, but we're in shelters, we're homeless, but we have your program. And you're not accepting your own program. This is right. what you, here's here's section eight or here's here's um soca, but you're not accepting it in your own building. Like you're right. giving me something that you're not accepting. You want cash. And, you and want cash. Even, even mm -hmm. when they told you that you know you you didn't make enough or whatnot, right? That 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 situation where they told you you didn't make enough. A lot of times, what happens is the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. <laughs> right? right. Which is why I always Absolutely. advise everybody when you speak to somebody be adamant about it. I mean, I'm gonna give you a, re a quick recap of when I had to go to section eight, just to get the status of where my application was. And I was told I cannot get a letter to bring back to my um, counselor at HASA to prove that I was there. Well, you know what I did? I did not leave that office until I left with a letter. So sometimes right. you have to be persistent, right? Number one, persistent and always take names and numbers because they will play the game with you that when you call for a follow-up, they're going to ask you who you spoke to. So now you're going to beat them to the punch. Mm -hmm. so can, I, um, can, I, um, can I jump in for a minute? Can I jump in for a minute? Because this yeah, so is been all my mind. Lavelle, And then I'm going to wrap us and close us out. Got all right. Go ahead, really. So since we on the subject of, of, of housing and all of these vacant apartments, is there some way that we can get them to put in like... um? some kind of penalty for having the vacancy so long because people are using these new buildings as a trading commodity. They don't even have to fill a building to sell a building. They're making money with empty apartments. If these apartments... Absolutely. We need a vacancy law so that they can't keep these apartments vacant like this and that the city can take the apartment at fair market value mm -hmm. or something because they're just sitting there empty and people are trading them back and forth to the ARADs. Come on. Meanwhile, nobody, that's why we got shelters because the shelters is holding the people that should be in those buildings. So wait, wait, Lavelle, can we, I, I hear you, but can we back up? What about ARABs? No, I would say <laughs> that, that was just, that was just a metaphor. They keep selling the buildings back and forth to the ARABs. Okay. Because so, the ARABs don't want to leave the desert. They stay in the desert. They just okay, trading it back. Okay. And forth. Okay. 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 I'm going to have to stop that right there, Lavelle. Vocal New York is an anti racist organization, and that has a very, it's like, not, it's, not, it's, not, not, it's not a racist statement. That is a little it's bit not a racist. racist. That, that sounds a no, little um, bit. It, yeah, was okay. a meta, it was a metaphor. It was a metaphorical statement. If you listen to the statement, because ARABs are in the desert. Right? We're talking about geography. We're not talking about race. Yeah, so I hear you, um, Lavelle. Um, um, okay, wanna, okay, let's go. I'm moving on. I'm moving right along. Yeah. I want to I wanna, um, I wanna close this out, um, but I do want to say just to that point that um, sometimes whenever we don't intend to be like use inflammatory language or examples, but it's not always about intent. It's about impact. And like a person of Arab descent could be impacted negatively by that kind of framing. So I know you're not trying to do that. I know you're not being that because I know you as a human being, 
But I'm saying it doesn't matter what you mean. It matters what you say and how it comes out in a space. And it's a public space. And I don't know who else is watching this because it's on Facebook right now. Um, so that's the only reason I'm like saying it here in public versus telling you directly. Um, but um, also to Rosetta's point and to Wanda's point and to S Selena's point, we, do, we did have a campaign, the How's Our Future New York campaign uh, for intro 1211 in New York City that mandates that these are quote unquote affordable housing buildings set aside 10% at least or 15% of all units for people experiencing homelessness. Um, that will be implemented in the coming year. Um, so, but that's still not enough. Um, Cause like today people are still homeless. Um, so definitely bring all of that energy and that conversation to the homeless union meeting tomorrow. Um, and Selena will make sure that folks have that invite and I'll make sure you should have it in your guide to your week email as well. Um, and with that, I really want to close this out. So I, I really appreciate everybody like this has been a phenomenal conversation. I'm very grateful to the Legal Aid Society and to all of the leaders who got on, especially from across the country, um, and from across the state, excuse me. Um, and um, it was good to see Lavelle and Nilda, who I hadn't seen in a minute. So I'm um, very excited about that. Um, and it was great. Um, and also remember, this is recorded on, um, on Facebook. So if you wanna rewatch the presentation about the stimulus, if you missed something, all of that stuff is gonna be on the vocal Facebook page. Um, and I'll also send it out the link for that video in a follow-up email that I'm sending tomorrow. And I'm going to try to get the spread, the, the, the slideshow from Siobhan, the attorney who talked to us today. So I can also send that slideshow in an email as well. And I'm going to send the non-filers link also in the email to the IRS website. So look out for that by tomorrow. So I want to so say become a, become a tr contact tracer. Um, so, Jovan, so tomorrow is actually one of my work days, and you guys will be on a little early, so I won't be able to get on. Um, you will catch me in and out like you saw today. I know you were surprised when you caught me out there. And, again, I want to thank you guys for a great job. Um, I'm actually so happy of our protégés, guys. Um, continue the great work, and to our other leaders out there statewide, thank you so much, and stay safe. Thanks, everybody. Oh, okay.